Well, hello, or should I say bonjour from Paris, where here we are talking about some fragrances from our little cottage here in Normandy. What would Cleopatra wear? Come on a journey. I'm Gabby and welcome back to another edition of The Fragrantition where here on this channel we talk about nothing but fragrances so if that's your jam then keep on watching. In today's edition while I'm dressed up or glam looking like and feeling feeling like Cleopatra let's talk about some fragrances that maybe Cleopatra would wear and I think these five would suit her personality to a T. So if you're interested, then let's see what we've got. So let's talk about a real inexpensive scent. A scent that I heard of again through Chris, the perfume nest. If you've not subscribed to her, why not? She is a wealth of information. She is the first lady, as I call her, of the USA. If she was a president's wife, she would be it. She is the good girl. She's the it girl. And she recommended this perfume a while ago now. And so I sought after it. And it is called Courtesan by Worth. Now, the reason why I've chosen this scent is because although it's been made in the last 10 or 15 years, I do believe, this is a scent that has a vintage vibe to it. So I would not recommend blind buying this, but I think Cleopatra would wear this while she is cruising down the Nile. I think this would have been gifted by one of her courtesans as a thank you. I often believe that in a past life I was one of Cleopatra's maidens. And I think one of the maidens would have gifted her this. This is quite a spicy scent sprayed in the air. This opens with a juicy pineapple but it settles down to this wonderfully spicy, decadent, sensual, erotic sweetness of a scent. It has caramel in there, I do believe. Now, as you know, I'm not a fan of caramel, but I did blind buy this at a very, very good price. I think it was less than 20 quid. Have a vintage vibe. But again, it's from a modern era. This is so inexpensive. This is not, as I say, blind by worthy. But I think Cleopatra would wear this. Where would she wear this? Well, I think she would wear this when she wants to seduce, but in a way that she's hinting at an air of mystery. This scent has an air of mystery. One, some of the other scents, two in particular, are full on, in my opinion, erotic, but, but still classy. And this is a classy scent. This, you could put dress up, you could dress down, but courtesan by Worth, Cleopatra. Yes, she would wear this. Now this next one, I think Cleopatra would wear when she is completely in lust. Yes, I said it, in lust. This is an echo to a bygone era and it is Lost in Heaven by Francesca Bianchi. This, this is strong, it's it's quite an erotic scent. It's a scent that reminds me of 
carnal knowledge, but it also has a side to it that is sweet and playful. I think this is a dual personality bottle, in a sense, as I've called it. One side, Cleopatra is behaving, and then on the other side, Cleopatra is not behaving. And I think she would, I, I think this would be the Liz Taylor in a bottle if Cleopatra was wearing this. I think Liz Taylor would definitely rock this playing Cleopatra. It's certainly lost in heaven. It's, it's so sensual and it's, and it, it evokes so many emotions of heaven, but devilish at the same time. Um, it's, I think, if Good Girl Gone Bad from another brand was to smell, it would be like this because I've smelt the original and that Good Girl Gone Bad is it's Good Girl will always be a good girl in my opinion when I when I wear that kind of perfume. But this one, this is Cleopatra as she's rolling out of the carpet. Do you remember in Carry On? Cleo, yeah, she would be wearing this and intoxicating everybody around her, lost in heaven. This next one really would come as no surprise to many of my subscribers, and I know you're watching, and I do have a lot of European subscribers, as well as subscribers from the USA, Canada, um, and in the UK as well. Um, and in Australia. So I have subscribers from all over the world. And those who know me would know that Cleopatra would wear the Queen of Midnight Poison. It's bewitching, it's, begu it's beguiling, it's, it's a potion that I think out of all the poisons would suit her even more than the original poison. It is sweet, but I think it's a gothic Cleopatra. If Cleopatra would don a black jacket and matching black eyeliner, she would wear this. It has rose patchouli. It has, it opens up with a burst of citruses. This is an original formula. I'm just going to find the nozzle. It's, it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. There's an, an accord in it that has amber as well. It has this amber accord as it dries down. And I think it's all oh so sexy. It, but in a mysterious way again. I mean, Cleopatra, she had an, an aura about her. She had she, let's face it, she probably had men, women, even maybe the odd eunuch still, falling at her feet. And I think by wearing this, the patchouli is earthy, it, the rose is almost a black rose, I would say. And it's just beautiful. Out of all the Dior's, it is this and Pure Poison are probably my two most favourite Dior scents and it's such a shame it's been discontinued. However, look out for another video. And on that note, Midnight Poison, Dior, Cleopatra would wear at midnight. Now these last two I think are definitely Queen Cleopatra of the Nile in a bottle. The first one I'm going to talk about, they're both from two designer houses and the first one from Guerlain is, the, is Samsara. Now I have 
a bee bottle. It has changed to a a bottle like an ace of spades bottle. I haven't tried that one. But before the bee bottle, there was the original in the red bottles and the clear bottles. This has been reformulated, but I'm not sure if it's been reformulated again. I am so desperate to have an original Samsara. And I could do, really, because they go quite reasonably well on the grey market. But Samsara, to me, it opens up with the beautiful yellow floral of Ylang Ylang. And it's all about the Ylang Ylang, the sandalwood, as well as this dries down. Now, this Eau de Parfum, I don't know what it's like, it was like. Well, I do know what it was like before. It was five times the strength of this, ten times the strength of this. It dissipates quickly from the Ylang Ylang and then goes right down to the heart and the base of the sandalwood. It's so intoxicating and it's such a shame I haven't got a bigger bottle. But Cleopatra would wear this because it would just be her personality. She would exude samsara. It is Middle Eastern. It's the vibe, the whole vibe of it I get from samsara. I've got a spray of it on my hand because I love the opening in this. The opening is to die for. But I wish that opening lasted longer. It goes straight down to the bass notes within 15 minutes. And it doesn't last very long. This formula only lasts about three hours. So, yeah, the original formula, if you can get it in the red bottles or the clear bottles, please do. Even still in the B bottles, it's still worth it. I'm not sure about the, the newest range, but um, such a shame. The Mysore sandalwood. It's such an addictive scent, and Cleopatra would be addictive to others. I think that you know, Cleopatra would not, although she would be showing skin, she did not have to exert. Maybe she did her sexuality. But I think this suggests a little bit of that sexuality in there without being too provocative. Samsara by Gerla. And lastly, I've chosen this last one. It was hard. But I think the queen would go to Cleopatra would be from Yves Saint Laurent. No, not the original opium, but yes, Belle d'opium. The flanker, which smells nothing like the original opium. But this opens up with this smokiness and fruitiness. It's like fruits, it's like forbidden fruits, it reminds me of. It's like you take a bite of that fruit and who knows what you'll be biting. But this to me, I'm going to spray this in the air. It has this fruitiness but dissipates quickly and it has this hookah accord, this smokiness which fills the air and it feels like the Orient. It feels like the Middle East. It feels like something actually, to me, out of this world. It's otherworldly. To me, this kind of scent has. It feels like a past life. That's what it feels like to me. It feels like I would have worn this in a past life. That's why 
I equate this to Cleopatra. That's why I feel that this belongs to that era. I'm going to spray a little bit on my hand. Sadly discontinued, but if you can get it, it's still a beauty. The opening is maybe not to everybody's taste in probably the first 20 seconds, but as it dries down, this fruity peachiness, this fuzziness, this smokiness, this resinous, ambery, almost verging on slightly animalic too, although there isn't any animalic notes in here. It, it's perfection, perfection. And for those who cannot get hold of Baldiopium now, watch out for a future video. Now I know I was testing you and I was tantalizing you there, but in my next video, it will be quite a special video. So please watch out for that. Maybe it's a lie from here in France, in our little peaceful abode. So those were just five cents that I chose for Queen Cleopatra. What five cents do you think Queen Cleopatra would wear? Maybe in France, who knows? Until next time, I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.